welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 8 for July the 23rd, 2017. We're still in Unit 2 entitled Calling of Prophets. Our topic for today taken from uh, the Adult Quarterly is Speak the Truth Anyway. Our devotional reading comes out of the book of Ezekiel chapter 17 uh, verses 22 through 24. Our background scripture is taken from Ezekiel chapters 1 through chapter uh, 3 and our print passage today where we will be studying uh, comes from Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 1 through 11. Our key verse reads, He said to me, Son of man, Listen carefully and take to heart all the words I speak to you. Go now to your people in exile and speak to them. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, whether they listen or fail to listen. As taken from Ezekiel chapter 3 uh, verses 10 and 11 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore God's call of Ezekiel in terms of Ezekiel's eating of a scroll. Number two is to sense Ezekiel's reaction to being called to speak to a people who were not predisposed to listen. And then thirdly is to identify ways to be harder than flint in obeying God's call in a hostile context. We have three outlines uh, for our lesson today. Uh, the first outline is entitled Eat the Scroll. Uh, the second outline is entitled A Rebellious People. And then our third outline is entitled God's Spokesperson. I certainly thank and praise God for this another great opportunity to uh, share this Sunday School lesson with you. Uh, we thank and praise God for your efforts in uh, following along with us, we have been uh, for the last couple of weeks talking about prophets. Um, last week we were studying from the prophet Jeremiah. Today we are studying uh, from the book of Ezekiel chapter 3 uh, verses 1 through 11. I want to read a little bit of the biblical context for this lesson and then I want to share some background from the book of Ezekiel uh, that is taken from our lesson standard. Um, but the ministries of Jeremiah and Ezekiel overlapped. Uh, Ezekiel began his ministry during the final years of Jeremiah's 40-year ministry. Ezekiel's ministry may be divided into two sections. In section 1, uh, Ezekiel chapters 1 through 32, Ezekiel recorded God's warning to his people uh, held captive in Babylon. These warnings took place before the destruction of Jerusalem in 586 BC. In the second section, Ezekiel chapters 33 through 48, Ezekiel moved from words of warning and judgment to a message of hope. We read about Ezekiel's calling in uh, Ezekiel chapters 1 through 3 similar to the call of Jeremiah. Ezekiel was also called to preach a most unpopular message to a rebellious people. Additionally, God promised that he would strengthen them in their most uh, difficult work. So from our lesson standard, uh, we uh, learn that Ezekiel is introduced as a priest uh, in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 3 and uh, that is what he would have been had it not been for the tragic turn of events in the southern kingdom of Judah. Uh, the first stage in these events came in 605 BC when Daniel and his friends were taken captive to Babylon. You can see some reference in 2 Kings uh, chapter 24 verses 1 and 2 and then in Daniel uh, chapter 1 verses 1 through 6. Ezekiel's uh, relocation to Babylon was part of the second stage of exile. He was among the 10,000 of the elite citizenry uh, taken in 597 BC. Again in 2 Kings chapter 24 uh, verses 12 through 14 and then 
Daniel and other Jews were taken to serve in the king's palace. Um, that's in Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. While Ezekiel found himself in a completely different setting among the captives uh, by the river Kibar. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1. Even so the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And it was there uh, that the Lord proceeded to call the priest to a task he undoubtedly uh, did not anticipate and so we we certainly uh, appreciate the fact that uh, you know the Old Testament prophets uh, they operated uh, on two principles that we need to understand they um, uh, functioned as foretellers and they also functioned as forth telling so we want to uh, appreciate this lesson today and and take a look back at the prophets that uh, God was calling to uh, usher in truth and we're gonna uh, 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 talk about our topic for today is speak the truth anyway and I want to uh, focus a little bit on the truth uh, we understand from John chapter 14 uh, Jesus says I am the way uh, the truth and the life but I want to go inside of uh, that word truth for just a little bit and uh, I want to go to before we get into our outlines to Ezekiel uh, chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 because we want to get some perspective of the prophet's meal uh, what God was feeding him uh, the truth that he had in his spirit Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 9 uh, says now when I looked there was a hand stretched out to me and behold a scroll of a book was in it then he spread it before me and there was writing on the inside and on the outside and written on it were catch this lamentations and mourning and woe lamentations and mourning and woe so we see uh, the prophet's meal the truth that he was carrying concerning God's people dealt with grief uh, sorrow uh, deep suffering and calamity and also sadness uh, this was the truth that Ezekiel was carrying and so we want to be able to appreciate the fact that uh, when we understand uh, the, the, the truth of what God knows uh, it's not always pleasant to us um, I was thinking about uh, John chapter 3 um, for God so loved the world you all will remember that passage that verse uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that uh, whosoever believeth in him should not perish that is also tucked away in the truth is that if we fail to adhere uh, uh, to uh, uh, the message of God also locked inside of the truth is the consequences uh, if you stay over in the book of John chapter 3 you will see that God does not have to uh, quote something different uh, in terms of condemnation it's already tucked away in the truth it's already tucked away uh, in his words and that is what Ezekiel is carrying God's people Judah uh, uh, the southern kingdom of Israel uh, had failed to uh, uh, comply with the messages of God and so God raised up uh, Ezekiel to send a word to them that was the truth but it was a not it was not a good message uh, but later on in the book of, of Ezekiel we see uh, words of comfort words of promise words of hope uh, and restoration but first things first we have to deal with uh, this prophet's meal uh, that God gave him to eat 
Uh, it also helped Ezekiel to identify, internalize the message or the heart of God, the concern of God. Uh, 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 and this is the thing that grieves us uh, concerning the messages and the truth uh, of people who are failing to repent and failing to uh, uh, to give their lives to Christ. The truth is that we the the possibility is there for you to perish. Uh, we won't have time to get there today, but I want you to look at Luke chapter 13. So our first outline is entitled "Eat This Scroll." This is taken from Ezekiel chapter three, verses one through three, and the Bible says, "Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel." So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. Verse three, and he said unto me, Son of man. Cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. I want to make mention of this phrase, uh, son of man. Uh, God addresses Ezekiel this way more than uh, 90 times uh, in this book. Uh, but the phrase means a uh, person, a human being, and emphasizes the humanity and frailty of the prophet, uh, all the more when it stands in such proximity to a vision of God's glory. Uh, also, this use of the phrase in Ezekiel should be distinguished uh, from its use in the gospel as the favorite self-designation of Jesus. And so... Uh, Jesus uses the phrase to designate himself um, as the Son of Man. But we want to get some understanding here. So God is addressing Ezekiel as Son of Man. And so here the call of Ezekiel begins in chapter 1. So when we read about uh, his vision of the whirlwind in chapter 2, God began sharing with Ezekiel how he was sending him to a rebellious people. That's in Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 3. But uh, based upon what God had already shared with Ezekiel, um, God provided Ezekiel assurance of his presence in chapter 3. Uh, but verse 1 begins with God speaking to Ezekiel. Uh, God referred to Ezekiel as the son of man. And so as we said, this uh, phrase is used uh, more than 90 times in addressing uh, Ezekiel uh, but there was great symbolism in Ezekiel's eating the scroll from God it symbolized how God wanted Ezekiel to internalize his word to his chosen people uh, literally God was telling Ezekiel to take his message to heart it was in fact God's message not Ezekiel's. So uh, once Ezekiel had internalized God's message in his heart, God commanded Ezekiel to go and speak to the people of Israel. Uh, although Israel uh, is used here in verse 4, God was referencing uh, the southern kingdom of Judah. But Ezekiel did not hesitate. He did just as God had commanded. He opened his mouth and he ate the scroll. And so God continued uh, instructing Ezekiel to eat the entire scroll and fill his stomach. But I want to make a couple of points here about this scroll. It, uh, uh, the Bible says it tasted as sweet as honey, but uh, Ezekiel's reaction seemed to face, uh, at face value to be contradictory to the message that God was going to have Ezekiel share. Uh, Ezekiel described it as sweet for two reasons. First of all, uh, it was sweet because carrying out God's will uh, will always uh, be pleasing. And then second, God's words of judgment and punishment uh, were just the first part of the story. And then uh, in the end, God offered uh, the hope of a bright future. 
You know, uh, again, back over in John chapter 3, when we're talking about what God uh, did in, in sending Jesus, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we, we must understand here, uh, in doing so, even as it relates to Israel, sin is still a major player in humanity uh, at this time that we're talking about sin. Uh, ever since Genesis chapter 3 is still a main player uh, in in humanity uh, sin is still on the table uh, in terms of our relationship uh, with God through Jesus Christ and, and, and the sin aspect of humanity always uh, has to be addressed you, you notice how the structure of this book deals with judgment deals with the problem deals with the issue uh, and the consequences of sin and then the book turns uh, as many of the writings of the prophets do after the repentance uh, then then that we can start looking at the hope aspect of the relationship that God intends and wants to have with his people but the sin problem the judgment uh, the issue of why judgment is is meted out has to be addressed and so whenever uh, we we talk about coming to Christ we must always understand that we come to Christ for various reasons but in God's eyes the heart the sin nature of an individual has to be addressed first God works from the inside out and so uh, in this case uh, the people of Judah were still committing uh, uh, offenses sin in the sight of God in other words they were breaking the Mosaic law and and uh, and God had given them the law to be carried out from generation to generation but whenever a prophet appeared uh, in the Old Testament it's always a concern it was never good uh, God was raising up individuals to send uh, to his people. Uh, God had given multiple opportunities for his people to correct the sin, uh, just as we do today. God has, has bestowed upon us grace upon grace and mercy upon mercy. Uh, 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 if we look at Romans chapter 6, um, uh, we will find that that uh, uh, we are not grace was not intended or given to us by God that we should remain in sin uh, so we want to be able to keep that in mind but the question is asked in the quarterly how would you use the words uh, the bitter truth is better than a sweet lie in relation to Ezekiel's message then and to the preaching of today but I was looking at 2nd Timothy uh, chapter 4 uh, beginning at verse 1 all of this is good if you go over there to the fourth chapter the book of second Timothy but it is clear that in these last and evil times that that there are people or there are groups that 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 are uh, 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 putting in place teachers who will tell them what they want to hear uh, and so that is always the case uh, uh, with humanity we don't want correction uh, 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 we don't want sound doctrine we don't want uh, 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 warnings and even today we don't want messages of, of uh, concerning our sin we want messages of, of, of blessings uh, and, and all of the good things but remember as I said early inside of the truth inside of all of the good things the good news that we have uh, uh, and that we preach is consequences for rejection always remember that uh, and if you look over in Isaiah chapter 53 it tells us uh, as he prophesied concerning uh, the Messiah that would come that he was despised Jesus and rejected uh, of men and so we see that uh, even today and so we have to keep in mind to that that we have as I was studying this lesson the Spirit of Law was reminding me about the responsibility of a preacher the responsibility of a preacher 
our main responsibility uh, uh, aside from preaching the gospel is to tell men the truth tell men the truth tell men what God would want them to know uh, we we ought to be able to share with people that the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life which we have through Jesus Christ our Lord that is the fact that is the reality uh, of, of, of how we uh, should understand sin and our approach and our preaching concerning our adherence to the gospel of Jesus Christ the wages of sin is death there is no disputing that and that's what we see every day but our second outline is entitled a rebellious people this is taken from Ezekiel chapter 3 uh, verses 4 through 9 I want to read this from the NIV translation the Bible says verse 4 he then said to me son of man go now to the people of Israel and speak my words to them you are not being sent to a people of obscure speech and strange language but to the people of Israel verse 6 not to many peoples of obscure speech and strange language whose words you cannot understand surely if I had sent you to them they would have listened to you but the people of Israel are not willing to listen to you because they are not willing to listen to me uh, for all the Israelites are hardened and obstinate verse 8 but I will make you as unyielding and hardened as they are I will make your forehead like the hardest stone harder than flint do not be afraid of them or terrified by them for they are a rebellious people you know as I was reading these verses I was thinking about uh, why would God send a prophet to a people who would not listen you know, uh, we have to understand that God is just. Uh, if 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 we understand this passage here and uh, the structure of this book of Ezekiel and how judgments were dealt with, uh, God would uh, 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 would seem to be unfair if He didn't warn you uh, concerning your sin. It, it would be said of God that He was not just in in his punishment of of us or of humanity if he didn't uh, tell us the error of our ways and so uh, uh, the justification of the judgment uh, that God is uh, uh, rendering upon his people is the, is the, because the fact that he has talked to them and he is con continuing to talk to them and I love the fact that God doesn't change his mind and as I said in John chapter 3 God for God so loved the world so so even though we are rejecting God his love is unshaken his love does not move his love is intact in the fact that he is still willing as I was reading this and we were talking about uh, God was sharing with Ezekiel that his people were not willing but we see good that God is willing so you can see uh, uh, the contrast uh, that the people are not willing to accept God so they are not going to accept the preacher uh, and so but it doesn't change the fact that God is still raising up individuals sending Ezekiel into captivity uh, uh, with his people so while they are in captivity God is still talking to them while they're going through uh, while they're dealing with the uh, uh, the repercussions if you will of of their own sin uh, and I think this is beautiful uh, some of us as preachers uh, we don't want to go through anything but but sometimes we have to go into the matter with the people and and even though they are going through there should be some elders somewhere to help them understand that 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 these things don't have to be uh, uh, you don't have to die in sin you don't have to wallow uh, in condemnation but you can be free you can be set free uh, if you're willing uh, 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 God says this through Isaiah uh, 
uh, in the very first chapter of his book he's God says through him if you are willing if you be willing and obey you would eat the good of the land and so we have to reach people uh, uh, when they're going through to uh, uh, share with them that there is a willingness uh, that God is looking for uh, the willingness for us to respond to repent don't forget that word repentance is key uh, for our relationship uh, with God through Jesus Christ we have to make a confession unto salvation we have to make a confession that 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 we are sinful and that we are sinners and so we have to be able to acknowledge the fact that we have done wrong and sometimes that is hard for us to do but God is saying these individuals Israel and and I should make the point here another aspect of why God is is not changing uh, and he's still sending messages to Israel is because he's in a covenant with them. You want to remember that uh, uh, the, the the nation of Israel is the only people in a covenant uh, with God. It goes back to Abraham. These are his people. He brought them out of Egypt. Uh, he stayed with them, followed them through the wanderings in the wilderness. He guided them into the promised land under Joshua so they have a special connection with God they have a covenant relation uh, uh, with God that cannot be broken uh, and so we want to uh, if you have some time you can read Romans chapter 11 and you will see uh, what I'm talking about but uh, God also informed Ezekiel that he was not sending uh, him to a people with strange language but instead to his own people uh, and so it's true uh, that Ezekiel would not be speaking to a group of foreigner, foreigners whose language he would not understand uh, God's instructions to Ezekiel were most appropriate considering that his people were now captive in a foreign land and I want you to look at their spiritual state uh, uh, Judah uh, Psalm 137 uh, read all of that if you have uh, time so but here in our commentary here the question is asked why wouldn't the people of Judah listen the answer was simple if the people of Judah had not listened to God Almighty why uh, would they listen to Ezekiel a mortal human being they would not listen because they were a hard case hardened in their sin let's go back to John chapter 3 uh, 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 and, and you will see over there uh, that men love darkness uh, this is why uh, uh, and even uh, it, it, the Bible tells us over there in John chapter 3 that uh, Jesus didn't come to the, into the world to condemn the world uh, he came into the world that he might save uh, uh, the world uh, from their sins but it it goes on to say that men love darkness rather than the light that is the case today we love darkness we love the darkness of our deeds we love the the sin the fun all of the things that we uh, the lust of the flesh if you will uh, uh, and so we become callous in this nature of sin and keep in mind this is the same nature that we were born in so we are quite used to it uh, but if we are going to be saved you and I uh, we have to be willing uh, uh, to start over and again back over in John chapter 3 Jesus tells Nicodemus that you must be born again you gotta start over uh, you need a new nature to live this new life and Judah was not willing to part with their ways uh, and so we understand that and we see that uh, and it is uh, very common today we don't want to break with uh, the so-called tradition of sin we don't want to break with the environment that we are in we don't want to break with the friends we don't want to break uh, uh, in, in Israel's case uh, they were sacrificing and serving other gods. They didn't want to break uh, 
with those little gods that they might enjoy the relationship with the Almighty God, even though they knew that the Almighty God has uh, uh, had saved them on multiple occasions and brought them out. And they are in captivity because they have been warned to change that behavior and they are not willing to do so. And so we have to understand uh, 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 God's hands in, in many regards is tied. Uh, God is not a bully. Uh, 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 he wants us to, to, to want to love him, to, to, to have an attitude of, of, of willingness to, uh, uh, to be a part of the family of God. Uh, to be humble, uh, to uh, commit ourselves to humility rather than pride uh, of thinking that we don't need anything, we don't need God right now, we await, you know, and all of these kinds of things. But this is the issue today, and humanity has not changed. And so here, uh, what God was doing to illustrate how God's hand would touch Ezekiel uh, to be just as uh, defiant as God's chosen people. God would anoint Ezekiel's mind, make your forehead like the hardest stone. Uh, the Hebrew word for uh, the hardest stone literally means an unbreakable stone. I like that. We have to do that uh, uh, certainly for us that preach the gospel and minister. We, ha we cannot lose sight of the fact that sin is running rampant in our land. We cannot compromise. We cannot break the message. We cannot water down the message. Uh, the more I studied this lesson, the more I thought about sound doctrine, uh, uh, a whole wholeness of the truth, telling people uh, 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 the consequences as well as the upside of giving their lives to Christ. And so we don't want to water down the message and so uh, Ezekiel uh, God is making him just as hard as the people that he might be encouraged to speak to them even though they were going to reject him and they would not respond favorably to the message because they had rejected the God that sent Ezekiel to them but the question is asked in the quarterly uh, we observe that some Christians expre express a fear of public speaking, especially when it comes to sharing a righteous message in an unrighteous environment. Uh, why might this be the case? So explore how this would be com com compounded if one knew that others would refuse to listen to what he or she had to say. And so I even in today's culture in our churches today preachers love to get people to say amen uh, uh, to give them a sense that uh, their message is acceptable to them and they uh, saying amen in terms of, uh, uh, of what is being said or in agreement uh, with what is being said but, but we have to share we have to deliver the message that God gives us for his people whether the people say amen or not we cannot get caught up in that vacuum of people's response uh, 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 in terms of uh, measuring what we say and what we cannot say we just have to cry loud and spare not we have to share in love the message of Jesus Christ he is not willing that any of us should perish but the problem is we have to understand that sin is still on the table and we have to deal with this issue of sin and, and so if we uh, uh, don't want Christ in our lives then who else are we going to serve but the devil and so we know he has been lying uh, uh, from the beginning so he was the cause and uh, part of the 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 the, the uh, uh, fall of man in Genesis chapter three, and he has not changed. Uh, he's always taking the messages of God out of context, uh, 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 out of its original intent, and that will always get us in trouble. And so here, our last outline is uh, 
entitled God's Spokesperson. This is taken from Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 10 and 11. And again from the NIV translation. The Bible says that he said to me, Son of man, listen carefully and take to heart all the words I speak to you. Verse 11. Go now to your people in exile and speak to them. Say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, whether they listen or fail to listen. That is one of the most powerful introductions that we can have as ministers. This is what the sovereign Lord says. What does the sovereign Lord mean? What does that tell us? Uh, the sovereignty of God, we sometimes miss that uh, in our messages and even in our response uh, to the messages of Jesus Christ but God is sovereign he is over all he reigns he rules over everything over everyone and what he says we should uh, reverence it we should take it to heart you know uh, years ago growing up in the church when uh, 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 men and women preached the gospel and they were reading the text and people stood to their feet nobody was able to move nobody was allowed to move we reverenced it because it was the sovereign Lord that was speaking to us from the text and and so now we've gotten a little bit more casual about what the sovereign Lord is telling us but he is telling us things for our own good he sent his only begotten son that we might be saved and he tells us in John chapter 3 that his motive for doing that was that he loves you and we have to respond to that intent we have to respond to that motive God loves you God loves us God loves the relationship that he had with Adam and Eve that was broken and that now can be restored through Jesus Christ so God says whether they listen or fail put it out there and we have to do that today and God gave us and gives us the opportunity to make a decision didn't Joshua say that to the children of Israel I believe in the 24th chapter he said choose you this day which God you're going to serve make a decision uh, and so that's what we are presenting uh, through the message of Jesus Christ it gives you an opportunity to make a decision it gives you an opportunity to choose it gives you an opportunity to say yes to the Lord or no to the Lord and so and once we understand the consequences of both answers then God is justified by what he does keep those things in mind and so we always have to understand God has a reason God has a motive and Israel Judah even at this time they didn't take the time to consider the motive of God but if you look over in Psalm 137 when they were uh, down by the river Kibar they were in captivity you know that they lost their praise they couldn't sing they couldn't give God the glory and sometimes that happens to us sin is the cause it strips us of our uh, 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 of the praise that God could get uh, the glory and the honor of who he is and what he has done and this is why we praise the Lord because he is worthy of it but Judah had lost their praise and then if you keep looking over there in Psalm 137 they were being tormented because they couldn't sing the Lord's praise they couldn't sing the Lord's song and the devil does that to us he robs us of our joy uh, he robs us through sin of opportunity to pray it's a privilege to praise the Lord but in that text they lost their praise and the question was asked over there in Psalm 137 how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land so I submit to you today get out of that strange land 
that you are unfamiliar with, that you know nothing about. Get away from those other gods that didn't uh, bring you out and didn't set you free and didn't uh, 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 send anybody to save you. But we know that God did. And we know that Jesus died. We know that he shed his blood for our sin. Come back to what you know. Come back to what you understand. Come back to the grace and the mercy of God and receive with fullness of heart the message that God has given to all who would believe and call upon his name. But the question here in the quarterly is as considering the persons we have covered so far this quarter who accepted God's call, uh, what do their examples teach us about having courage under fire? So I would just say to any and to all of those of us who have the task of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, to God be the glory. Stay encouraged, be encouraged, whether they listen or not. Tell them what thus says the Lord. Present Jesus Christ as the only way that men can be saved from the uh, uh, penalty of sin, from the power of sin, and then ultimately from the very presence of sin. Tell men the truth. Speak the truth in love. Temper every message with love, the intent in which God sent his only begotten son that we find in John chapter 3. I hope, trust, and pray that I have given you something to think about from uh, this Old Testament passage of Ezekiel. Uh, but we know that we are living in times where men don't want to hear the truth. But it should not ever, should never ever stop us from continuing to do what the Lord has commanded us to do. So our closing prayer Lord God, we thank you for being there for us in our times of adversity. We know that we would have utterly failed if it had not been for you. We give you praise for being an awesome God whom we can trust completely. We know that you will never leave or forsake us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I certainly have enjoyed this lesson today and I hope that you have too. And until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.